everyone, it's Karen from the Geordie Grandma. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is week four of the Summer Body Challenge, which is in collaboration with the Transatlantic Housewives of YouTube, as we call ourselves. And that includes at Maria Crocker, at Tina's Talk Time, and at Busy Bee Marie. And we got together to um, create a 10 week Summer Body Challenge basically to motivate each other and hopefully motivate anybody that's watching so we can try and lose weight, get fit, healthy um, and happier and for me personally to help get my type 2 diabetes under control. We're all doing different healthy eating plans, lifestyles. Uh, mine is low carb. Um, Busy Bee Marie is doing the 16-8 fasting. Uh, Maria Crocker is doing Slimming World and Tina is doing a bit of everything I think. I think she was trying meal replacement um, shakes and, and things like that. So when you've watched my video if you want to go over and watch theirs to see how they're getting on that would be great. Um, let's help support each other. I'll put the links to their channels in the description box below. So as always I'll talk a bit a little bit about um, how my week's gone. Uh, what, what's been good, what's been bad. Uh, the focus this week is on socialising. So each week we try and focus a little bit of our video on a different topic and this week is socialising so I'll talk a little bit about that. We'll do the way in towards the end um, and then I'll talk about what I've learned um, and what I'm going to do you know, going forward because I want this to be uh, a change of lifestyle rather than a diet. How has this week gone for me? Well, it was Eurovision at the weekend. I don't know if anybody watched it. Finland was robbed. Um, but we had my son Simon and his wife Haley over to watch the um, watch the show. And we usually do that, you know, we go to theirs or they come here and we'll have food and drink. And I was a bit worried because I thought, how, how am I going to do this? Um, I suppose this, this is, I'm starting with socialising here. So we usually have like a, a buffet thing, but I thought this this year we'll do, we've had this before, Simon and Hayley love something called currywurst. And if you don't know what that is, it's kind of a, a hot dog with a kind of curry sauce on it in a big bun um, with like little onions and things on the top. Now, we, none of us eat meat apart from Warren, so we, they're obviously vegetarians, uh, hot dogs or sausages. and we used this year we used richmond meat-free sausages um and i think it's may mayfield i want to say mayflower is it mayflower um, it may be mayflower or it may be mayfield curry sauce we used to put on it i think proper curry waste has tomato sauce mixed in with the curry but we actually forgot to do that so we had the curry waste i'll put a picture of mine here it doesn't look very appetizing but it's actually really tasty and they all had, um, you know, the part baked buns with theirs and lots of crispy onions on the top. Um, I had two of the low carb buns that I talked about last week, which are a little bit chewy, um, but I did heat them up in the oven um, and they did taste a lot nicer. So I had the low carb buns um, and I didn't put the crispy onions on the top of mine. I just put some of the curry sauce and it was actually really nice and I didn't eat all of the second bun. I maybe only ate a quarter of it. Um, I, I ate the sausage and the curry sauce out of it, but I didn't eat all the bun. So that was good. Now, Haley brought profiteroles over, and I'm afraid I couldn't resist having some of those. So I'd only had two, uh, you know, the, the profiterole tower. I only had two of those. So I was really good. I didn't drink any alcohol either. I don't really drink, so it wasn't much of a challenge for us that. So I was quite happy with that. On Sunday, Warren went metal detecting, um, so I was on my own all day, and we had some fudges that we'd bought for the grandkids, and it was calling to us. I could hear it, come on, eat me, <laughs> so I did. I had a fudge, which had 17 grams of carbs in it. So it wasn't a bad week, um, let's put it that way. And we'll, we'll, I'll tell you later whether I, whether I lost weight or I put weight on. So it hasn't been a bad week. I did eat some things that were healthy um, and low carb and were actually very tasty. 
And the, the first thing I wanted to show you was uh, one of the breakfasts I had this week. I actually had it a couple of times this week. I had some Richmond meat-free bacon. <clears throat> um, I had some scrambled eggs and I had half an avocado with it. And that was actually very nice. And that kept me full until dinner time. I didn't, I don't think I had my dinner until about one o'clock or lunch, whatever you want to call it, until about one o'clock those days. Um, I definitely felt fuller for longer. And I think that may have been because I had mostly protein and the good fat, the avocado. Um, so that was really nice. We also had a stir fry for tea one night. Uh, so it's got, it had bean sprouts in, um, red cabbage, onion, peppers, a bit of, um, a little bit of teriyaki sauce. And I had some prawns on mine. I think Warren had his with chicken. And that was really tasty. Uh, with very low carb. There was, I actually made, I was inspired by Marie and Tina last week who both made soup. So I was inspired this week to make my own soup and I made a broccoli and Stilton soup. Well, actually Warren made it for us because he was off work one day and I said, will you make that soup for us? And he did. And it was really, really tasty. Again, I'll put a picture here. Doesn't look very nice, but it was really tasty. I think um, I've got some in the freezer and I think I might liquidize it a little bit more because I'm not keen on, on chunky soups. So I may liquidize that a little bit more, but it was really tasty. The Stilton, the Stilton in it made it, you know, a little bit salty. Um, Warren did say, oh, that would go lovely with a crusty bun, but there was no crusty bun. It was just the soup. I also had a nice salad this week. So, you know, just lettuce, tomatoes, cucumber, some peppers. Um, I put some feta cheese on there. Just a little tip, if you buy feta cheese and you're the only person in your house that eats it, buy the tub that uh, the feta cheese is in the brine rather than a block of feta cheese because once you've opened it, unless you're going to eat it all within a couple of days, the block of cheese, it's going to go off. Whereas if it's in the brine, it'll keep in the fridge for, I think it's more than a week. So that's much, much better if you're the only person in the house eating that. So those were some of the nice things I had that helped um, keep me on track this week. So to go on to the, the focus of the week, which is socialising. Um, it's Socialising is a good thing to do because, you you know, even if you, you live with people, um, you can still feel lonely, you know, everybody's doing their own thing. <clears throat> you still need to, you know, get out and and have some time with your friends. Uh, it helps It helps make you feel happy. It, felt, it helps energize you. It helps you keep more motivated if you are trying to stick to a healthy eating plan. Not everybody has lots of friends that can go out socializing with. You may have one or two, you know, that you can, that you can go and have a walk with or go to the cinema with, something like that. But you may also want to think about joining a, a club of some sort, a group of some sort. It's th those are always a good way to socialise. Join a book club. You know, if you can't find a book, a book, a book club that's being run offline, then join an online book club. That's always a good way of socialising and talking to to like-minded people. There's something um, online that I took part in, took part in that I was a member of briefly um because they asked me to you know join and, and review it from a blog um it was called the joy club and it's basically an online club for people over i'd say over 60 people who are more towards retirement age because a lot of the the events they have on online are through the day and they're all live events which is really good because you can go on and you can interact with the other people who are in the group as well you know there's a chat thing you can actually speak live so it's a bit like a zoom call, call where everybody can join live and you can see each other and you can talk to each other and that's a good way of making friends that you can maybe take offline but they had some really good um classes in their events i did a few of their creative writing classes which i thought was really fun um and you know you get to hear each other's pieces of writing and chat to each other that was really interesting I did a couple of their exercise classes which was really good uh, they're more geared towards older people um, but they, they have lots of kinds of events on they had they used to have like a coffee and chat morning where everybody would just you know get on the on the event on the call live and, and chat to each other and have a cuppa in their own home and that was a good way of socializing so you don't need to feel like you're, you know you're on your own there's always somewhere you can go to either offline or online 
where you can talk to other people and you don't have to feel demotiva demotivated. Um, you can have fun and, and socialise anywhere in these days really. One of the um, things I found really good for socialising, and I think this was really good for people who maybe want to go to something on their own offline, was the sip and paint class that I talked about in my favourites video this month. This is like a, a watercolour art class and there's quite a few people there go on their own and um, you get talking to the other people on your table because you know you, you 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 don't have to go with somebody to do that you can go and do it on your own but there's lots of people to talk to and it's a monthly thing so you're making friends in, and you never know that might lead to offline um offline that might might need to lead that might lead to meetups outside of the class as well so that is a good way of socializing but all of these things are a good way of one keeping your mind off food um they help you feel energized sometimes when I know when I was in on my own on Sunday, you can sit and you, you know you can watch the TV and you just think, mm, I feel a bit not down really, but not not energized. And I always found that when I do the sip and pain class or when I did these you know online joy club events, I always felt really energized afterwards. I felt motivated and and happy. So it's definitely a good idea to socialize, particularly if you're trying to you know, lose weight and get fit, it's always good to mix with other people who have the same kind of interests as you. But the other thing about social situations and possibly the downside of social situations if you're trying to lose weight is when you're out and about and there's food and drink involved. So like on Eurovision night when, um, you know, the kids came over, I, I, I adapted what everybody was eating to something I could eat by using the low-carb buns um, and I didn't feel deprived at all so you can adapt and I actually went to Buffet King this week which is I don't know if Buffet King is a national chain or if it's just in um, Gateshead uh, but it is a, a Chinese all-you-can-eat buffet restaurant in the metro centre in Gateshead and I've always enjoyed going to Buffet King. You know, you pile your plate with lots of different kinds of Chinese dishes. But since I've been doing low carb, I, I've been thinking, can I really go to Buffet King? You know, because Chinese is usually noodles and rice and chips and things and batter. And I thought, can I do it? But this week we did go to Buffet King. And I'll put some pictures on here of what I did eat. I had some of the vegetarian hot and sour soup. Now I'm not sure what the nutritional values of any of these meals are um, but I just chose things that for me were not as high carb as some of the other things. So I uh, deliberately didn't have rice, I didn't have chips, I didn't have noodles. So what I did choose was the hot and sour soup which is very very tasty and you know you could have two or three bowls of that if you wanted. It's really spicy um for me because i i'm not that keen on spicy foods but i do like the hot and sour soup i didn't have the prawn crackers um i had some of the foo young the egg foo young which has got vegetables in it i had some of the it was like a stir fry cauliflower and pak choy thing so i had that i had some of the the crispy seaweed which is basically just fried cabbage yes it's in oil and i'm not sure what kind of oil they do, do it in but I thought it was the better choice um, rather than having a prone toast or something like that. As I've said before I don't eat meat so it does make it a little bit more difficult especially for choice in some somewhere like that because they don't have an awful lot of you know fish or vegetarian options. Um, I had the mushrooms and peppers and onions in an oyster sauce. Again I don't know what carbs are in these but for me they looked like the the better options um i also had a plate of mussels in cream sauce um which were really nice now i know mussels are are low in carbs and the cream is is good so that was nice and i actually enjoyed the the evening at buffet king i didn't feel deprived at all i usually have a pineapple fritter and syrup when i'm there and i didn't have it and I didn't actually miss it. It wasn't like a struggle not to get up and get it. I just, I didn't want it. So I was quite happy with that. I had a, a, a diet Pepsi and a glass of water. Because like I say, I don't really drink. So it was, I was quite happy eating out. So you can adapt. You know, you can go to a restaurant 
and choose the, the lower carb things. Sometimes it might be difficult depending on what restaurants you go to. For instance, if you went to an Italian restaurant, it's pizzas, pastas, that's going to be difficult. Um, you can't ask for the, you know, the pasta without the pasta, really, or the pizza without the crust. You can, a lot of Italian restaurants will do a salad, um, maybe a chicken Caesar salad. It'll have dressing and things on it, maybe it's got croutons in, but it's probably the, you know, the more lower carb choice if you wanted to go to Italian. Um, Chinese does have a little bit more options because Fu Young is, is, um, quite low and low quite low in carb so that's always a, a good choice um a burger burger places you know like um tgi fridays something like that even somewhere like chiquito's mexican place you could get the burger in the salads uh but don't maybe don't have the bun you know ask for it to come without the bun you'll still pay the same but you can, you know, make good choices when you go to restaurants. And actually, if, about 15 years ago, I had gallstones. Uh, and every time I ate something fatty, I was in excruciating pain. So it was just easier not to eat anything fatty. I stopped eating crisps, stopped eating chocolate. Um, I actually lost about five stone. Um, and then I had my gallbladder out and everything just went here way after that. But the point is... It, I, I still went out for meals when I had gallstones but in most restaurants you could ask have you got a lower fat alternative um, and a lot of the restaurants were happy to you know to help you out so you know maybe if you're doing whatever diet you're doing you know whatever healthy eating plan you're doing you could go you could, when you go to the restaurant you could ask for have you got something you know that doesn't have pasta or chips or something with it what you know what what alternatives could I have um you could do that for you know most restaurants and they'd be happy to help you what I thought was quite interesting was like I've said I'm type 2 diabetic um and it's not it hasn't been under control at all if you've been watching regularly I've said before that you know it's 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 supposed to be between four and seven when you haven't eaten and it's supposed to be between seven and ten just after a meal and mine has gone up to the highest it went up to was about 20 you know and it, it's it usually hovered around the 12 13 mark which is really high and the longer your blood sugar is high the more you have problems you know you I, I've de I developed neuropathy I have really bad pain in my feet it can you know affect your eyesight it can affect your kidneys it's really not good to have your blood sugar that high all the time well it's not good, not good to have your blood sugar that high at all so what I did was I took my blood sugar I've got a little pin prick thing finger prick thing um, I took my blood sugars before I went out uh, took me to Buffet King and they were 6.8 which is really good I'm very happy with that I've managed to, to hover around that number um, from you know the last four weeks so I'm really happy with that uh, so I took my blood sugar, sugar again when I came home so this was probably an hour after I'd eaten and it was actually 6.3 so my blood sugar had come down after I'd eaten which was quite surprising so I obviously did make good choices I'd be interested to know what it would have been if I'd ate the pineapple fritter and um, maple syrup but I didn't so I was really happy with that so if you make good choices, it is good. Now for the weighing. Um, I'll just put the video in here of me getting on the scales. So you can see there I'm 14 stone, 7 and 3 quarters. So I've lost, I think it was a pound and, pound and a quarter since last week. And all together in the last four weeks, I've lost four, four and a half pounds four and a half pounds um which is roughly a pound a week which i'm really happy with because the main aim of me doing the summer body challenge was to get the type 2 diabetes under control which it seems to be working um and the weight loss is just an extra because you know if you're type 2 by diabetic they tell you to lose weight so i'm happy with a pound a week yes it would be nice to lose six pound every week but that's not going to happen so i'm quite happy with a pound a week it means i can sustain it hopefully fingers crossed the other thing i wanted to say about socializing that i should have said before the weigh-in but i forgot uh was i was listening to a podcast 
it's called the the UK low carb podcast I'll put a link to it below because I think it's really inter it's really interesting and if you're interested in doing a low carb um, lifestyle or keto lifestyle then this is is a really useful podcast um, I listen to it on my walk to work on a morning and the episode I was listening to this week was a one on socializing uh, and it was really interesting and he was saying I think he's called Dan Creef um, he was saying that if he eats, he's, he's downfall, I think he was talking about, was uh, cheese and crackers. Um, and if he eats a couple of crackers, then he wants more carbs the next day, and then even more carbs the day after, and it's a slippery slope. So he says he's best, he's the kind of person who it's best just not to have any, um, and then he won't get on that slippery slope. But there, you know, there are people out there who can, you can, they can go to a restaurant and have a blowout, uh, and then the next day get straight back on it um, it won't affect them but if if you're that type of person then that's great if you're a bit like me where you have one you want more then just don't have the first one it's much easier but I highly recommend that podcast if you want to um, if you want to go and have a listen to it the other thing that I wanted to say about socialising was there's lots of different online groups you can join um, that are, have got the same healthy lifestyle uh, interests as you might have. So there'll be groups out there that are talking about Slimming World things. There's group, I'm in a Facebook group that talks about low carb. You get lots of good tips from there. You know, if you're having a bad day, you can go on and see you're having a bad day and you get lots of comments that will try and help you. So that is a good way of socialising. It's one of the reasons that, that slimming groups like Slimming World or Weight Watchers actually have a group you can go to because it's good to interact with, you know, people who are on the same journey as you um, and it helps motivate you. So if you don't particularly want to go to a class or there's no, as far as I know, there's no low carb, low carb classes around then join an online group. You might not want to be on Facebook. You don't have to, you know, interact with it any other way other than joining groups that interest you. Um, that's a really good way of using Facebook. So what did I learn this week? Well, I learned that I can go to Buffet King and stay on track, so that was good. But I, I'm, I'm in the future, I'm going to come up against restaurants again. Um, so I'm going to, when I go in, in, you know, any other time, I'm going to think to myself, I can't choose um, you know, better options. So that's what I learned this week, that I can do it. Next week, the focus is on what I ate, which I talk about every week. So I thought I'd ask uh, you um, if there's anything you particularly want me to talk about, if you want me to talk about more breakfasts or more lunches or more dinners or more snack foods, maybe how to put a, a three-course meal together, you know, if you want a romantic evening in there, uh, if you just want a three course meal for yourself i'm happy to answer any questions you've got so if you've got anything that you want me to talk about next week leave them in the comments below um, and i'll try and do that i hope you're joining in with the summer body challenge if you are let me know how you're getting on oh i forgot to mention as well the challenge i sat, set i keep forgetting quite a lot of things this week uh, the challenge i set last week was for the other transatlantic housewives to take a picture every day of something that brings them joy because I think looking at pictures that make you feel happy help you feel more motivated so I'm going to put a couple of pictures in here that um, the other ladies took uh, and you can see what made them feel happy this week I hope you took some pictures of what brought you joy or what brings you joy so you can look back back at them when you're just feeling a little bit uh, um, and hopefully it'll make you feel happier. That last five minutes was a little bit jumbled but I hope you followed along. So thanks so much for watching. That's all I've got for you this week. I'll see you again soon. So bye for now.